We're here with John Labovitz. Did I say it right that yes, time? Yes, he did. Uh, who was in the exhibit hall taking portraits of everyone who wandered by? Everyone who decided to come in. Yeah. Yes. Is this a project that you've been working on? Um, the portraiture in general is kind of a project I've been working on. Um, this was just an idea that I, I, I'm a coder as well, mm -hmm. and having come to the conference, I thought, well, you know, I, I, I want to sort of integrate this photography project of general portraiture with this hacker community. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, well, why not take portraits at the, at the conference? Do you know how many people you got today? Um, not offhand, let's see, probably 20, 25, something like that. It was a big, a big crowd at the end, so I lost track. I know, I, I wandered through the bathroom. Mm -hmm. It's between yes. the strange love light, or it's past, you are between the bathroom and the strange love light. That may actually have been why we had so many And people. so I kept wandering past, and I'd seen the flyer, and I kept thinking, I bet you that's what he's doing, and I wonder, but then... <laughs> Uh, yeah, I run back away from the camera anyway, and <laughs> back here and cornered. The cameras are everywhere. <laughs> um, what got you involved in photography? Um, I've been doing photography probably pretty much all my life. My dad was a photographer, mm -hmm. and so I grew up with the dark room in my house. Mm -hmm. and sort of the um, he was sort of a geek in a way at that time too, and so we had like not just the photography, but like the big dark room and the big print room, mm -hmm. you know, all this stuff. And um, so I learned a bit about kind of that, you know, photochemical photography and then got out of it for a while. And then about 12 years ago, I was looking for a new camera, just a little point and shoot to take on a trip. And I found a camera from the 1950s and I like totally fell in love with it. It was like the magic box. Mm -hmm. And and I that was when I was living in Seattle. And mm -hmm. so I just started shooting and... So for the last 10 or 12 years, has been pretty serious. Is that the camera that's in there? No, no. although I have it in there, but it's it's my spare mm -hmm. that's in there. What kind of camera are you using? So this is a Mamiya RB67, mm -hmm. and it's it's sort of like the studio workhorse of the 70s and 80s, probably. Mm -hmm. And it's now what all the studio photographers have like given up to go to digital, and so these are like easy to find. They're really well built. They're like total tanks. Mm -hmm. It's a camera tank. And totally mechanical. No electronics. And you are shooting film photography here at the Open Source Conference. Yes, that's right. And what inspires you to use film rather than digital, aside from just the connection with your past? Yeah, well, I, I think actually I just have a hard time using digital cameras because I don't like the interface like it gets in my way a digital uh -huh. camera tends to get in my way more so than a film camera like it's not just any film camera but these sorts of film cameras where like everything is manual mm -hmm. there's something about the process that you're really like figuring out well what's the tool doing right now and you're not having to try to navigate menus and let the computer decide what's in focus so it's a lot of kind of I guess it's artistic decisions like what do I want in focus what do I want lit what do I what do I want the aperture all this stuff and having the sort of tactility of the controls actually helps with that. So that's part of it. And then the other thing is that film, like there's actually all these different types of film you can buy and there's mm -hmm. all these types of developers and there's all these processes, whereas with the digital camera, like you only have one sensor yeah. and that's, yeah. so you sort of have one choice you can do a lot later, but I find like I'd rather make some of those decisions when I'm actually in the process of shooting instead of trying to decide later how to post process it mm -hmm. you know it's that way the photograph is actually in the moment and it's yeah. not it's kind of like you know cropping like do you do you compose it in the frame or do you just shoot it really wide and then say oh I'll crop it later so but, do you yeah. do you send these off or do you develop them yourself I develop them at home yeah so, so it's a really kind of a labor of love moment. Yeah, yeah. And it takes more time, but I'm sort of starting to go, well, that's okay to take more time. It you is. Know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, now, you were here just today from noon to four, I think. Right. Uh, have you been at the conference in another capacity? Yeah, well, two capacities. I mean, I'm volunteering. I'm doing the volunteer uh, coordinator in the evenings. Mm -hmm. And then I'm also just here to see some of the sessions. So. Have you seen anything that was particularly striking to you while you were here? Um... I'm just really impressed by the conference as a whole. Yeah. You know, I just I've been to a lot of tech conferences that are more of the commercial, commercially run type. Yeah. And and I've also though been involved in some of the the sort of alternative conferences here, like Foscon a few couple of years ago mm -hmm. with the Ruby Group. And I really like this sort of more lightweight volunteer run, um, 
you know, it just it lets the actual like connection and, and information flow much better than the big heavy logos everywhere, you know, commercial, big, 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 big sponsors, you know, yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah, this was oh, this was a labor of love too. I yeah. mean, it really, I was amazed watching it. I remember when I heard that they were going to do it, and we had Selena and Audrey on our show a couple of times mm. uh, to talk about uh, this conference and about other things. And watching the entire process has just been really impressive. And to be here while everything gets pulled off. Yeah, well, and that that it's transparent too. Yeah. I was mentioning to them is like that's really important actually is to have other people see it and say, oh, you know, I could do something like that because that's kind of what it's really about. If you want to give up your life for a few months. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is what I think that most of them have done lately. But. Definitely. Yeah. Well, it was really, really good to talk to you. Can you tell us where we can find you online and on Twitter? Um, the easiest place is johnlabovitz.com, mm-hmm. J-O-H-N-L-A-B-O-V-I-T-Z, mm-hmm. and Twitter's J-S Labovitz, same spelling, J-S-L-A-B-O-V-I-T-Z. Right. It was really good to talk to you. I look forward to seeing our pictures, too. Thank you. All right. Thank you, John. Thanks.